Yo, what the f is up, man? Big Bone coming at you with a carnivore chicken parmivore. If you don't like it, your mother's Wait, no. That's not right. That's not right. Anyways, I got like a, a carnivore version of chicken parm that I'm making today. It's uh, it's kind of my own recipe. It's not like not the, like the last couple ones I found this on that guy's channel or whatever. I'm, I didn't invent these methods. You know, they've been around. I'm not the first person to do any of them. Uh, but this is just how I would do it. I wanted to kind of make like a chicken parm. Uh, there's no tomato sauce on a carnivore version, so I did a couple different ones. I did a ketovore, a carnivore, and I did like a little bit of a, a low-calorie alternative for somebody who's kind of like trying to watch their calories too. It's f***ing awesome. I enjoy taste testing this really a lot. So, enjoy. Let's do it. So, uh, instead of using tomato sauce like a normal person would do, I decided I had to be special and make like this like uh, tomato relish kind of thing. You're going to want to do this shit ahead of time, right? Because it, it takes a while to cook. So, you know, do it in the morning or do it the day before and refrigerate it. But just do it ahead of time so you don't have to wait on it. What you're going to need for this is uh, what I used is shallots, tomatoes, a half of half of a giant bell pepper, uh, one little wedge of a garlic clove, and uh, a, a hot chili pepper. And I couldn't find no fresh hot pepper, so I had to use one. I had to buy a jar of pickled peppers, which is not a tongue twister in this case, to use it. And uh, of course, there's going to be fresh basil, which, as you'll see, I forgot, I forgot to chop it. But I remembered after I forgot it, so it's in there, so it's good. And then you put some salt and pepper. And to make a long story short, too late! Let's dice some tomatoes. So when you're dicing these tomatoes, first off, you're gonna, you noticed uh, while I was screwing around with the, with the ingredient list before, uh, I was uh, sharp, putting a little sharp edge on my knife, right? Because, because tomatoes and peppers and all that kind of stuff, the, the skin's kind of tough to cut, right? So you're gonna cut the ends off the heels, the heels off the tomatoes, right? And uh, s slice them into little columns and stack them up. But when you cut them, right, you're going to want to cut the underside of the skin because it's easier to cut. It's uh, less less brutal on a knife, right? So cut them into strips, strips again, and then make them perpendicular and cut them into little cubes. And that's how you dice tomatoes. Now go ahead Wipe the tomato crust and juice and <laughs> off your knife and wipe your cutting board down and get ready to cut yourself a red pepper. So you start it off, cut that bad boy in half and uh, pull the seeds out. I keep a little, uh, actually that, that half I'm saving for later. So let me speed this up here. Sorry about that. Anyways, so you see I got my little ball over there. I keep a little bowl there just for like garbage and waste and stuff so I don't got to keep going back and forth to the garbage, right? So just go ahead and pull your seeds out of there. And uh, come on, let's go. So look, see, you don't want to do it from the top. You want to do it from the bottom, right? So just cut it into strips. Then turn it perpendicular and cut it into cubes. Wipe it down. It's chili pepper time. So with these things, just... Be careful. Don't like cut a chili pepper. First off, you want to get all the uh, seeds out of it once you cut it, right? Because the seeds are like extra hot or whatever. I mean, that's at least that's what I was told. I'm not like a food scientist. I don't know all the. I don't have all the answers here, right? Anyways, I do have one answer, right? And you don't want hot chili pepper juice on your hands when you're taking a leak. Or touching your eyes or anything like that right so that's one reason to wear gloves and it's another reason to wash your hands real good but you don't want that <coughs> on you when you're touching a sensitive spot because you don't want to be going to the doctor because it burns when you urinate because you you don't even have an STD at that point you might I don't know how you live your life anyways just dice these like you dice anything else now, it's even more important to wipe everything down 
after you cut the hot chili pepper than it was before when you did the tomatoes and all that other stuff. So, uh, and I, of course, I f***ed up, and I, I did the chili pepper before I was... I should have did it last, basically, right? But anyways, hold on. Here's the shallots. So, do the shallots like you're doing a tomato... Like a... Not a tomato. <laughs> onion. Uh, do the shallots like you're doing an onion, right? So, go, you can cut it in half. Do yourself a favor and don't cut the root off. Because that's, like... That's what basically releases the majority of the gases and makes you cry. So, you see how I do this, like, crossways cut on the top? And then I'll go side by side here with that. And then once that's done, you can just dice it up real easy. Anyway, I should have did the hot pepper last because of the uh, the pepper juice now is all over my all over my rag. So now I gotta go like you know be be real careful. Anyways, here's the garlic. Just uh, separate your little wedge there. Bang it with the knife, get the skin off it, and just chop it like garlic. At this point, I'm just going to wash my knife and cutting board because all that stuff I just cut is just all the <laughs> that gets all over everything and you don't want it just getting over other stuff. So just wash it right away. Don't wait. Like I mentioned before, I forgot to cut the basil, right? Oh, wait, that's not basil. That's basil. And since that giant, big-ass cutting board's a pain in the ass to wash, I just did this addendum with my little cutting board. So, go ahead, separate out your little basil leaves, and chop them up. It's not brain surgery. Anyway, head over to your stove, and turn it up, fire it up, and let's get this cooking. Heat up a saute pan here, and uh, I used about one tablespoon of coconut oil. I like to cook with coconut oil. Listen, I'll even use it if I'm doing carnivore, right? Like, like I should be using butter or tallow or whatever. But uh, coconut oil is a medium chain triglyceride, which uh, helps helps your body get into ketosis. And ketones are actually good for your brain function. And then on top of that, uh, I prefer saturated fat over unsaturated fat because the lack of a double bond in the carbon chain means it can't bond with another hydrogen molecule which means it's not going to go rancid in your bloodstream at least that's what i've heard don't take my word for it i'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist i'm not a biochemist do your own research look into it once your oil's hot go ahead and toss your garlic and onions in there onions shallots whatever it takes a few minutes for this stuff to caramelize so i'm gonna speed through it but don't shortchange it in real life once you got everything caramelized, then go ahead and throw the tomatoes in there. And uh, that'll be good because it'll stop them from uh, burning. You, the worst shit ever is burnt garlic. Well, I mean, there might be a worse than that, but burnt garlic sucks. So go ahead, throw your tomatoes and peppers in there. Throw everything in there at this point, actually. Tomatoes, peppers, uh, hot pepper, basil, salt, pepper, the whole come on! deal. Mix them up real good, you know, very thoroughly. And just, you could throw them on the back burner to simmer. You could throw a cover on it. Um, it's not like something you got to, like, pay close mind to. Just keep it on low on the back and just let it cook. Uh, stir it occasionally, but it shouldn't burn. There's enough water in the tomatoes. Just keep it low enough, you know. Or you might not know. I don't know what you know. You know? You know what I mean? Either way... I'm showing you, so if you don't know, now you know. And I'm not finishing that line, because I'm not trying to end my career before it starts. Got it? Anyway. And to make a long story short, too late. Just cook your tomatoes to whatever the consistency that you want is. You're going to have to cook them longer if you want them broken down more. I didn't want them broken down that much. I like it to be like a little bit more of like a chunkier kind of thing. So, but you're pretty much done with it. Just keep an eye on it and cook it. Let's move on. In keeping with the carnivore theme for the carnivore parm that I'm doing, uh, I'm going to be frying the chicken piece in tallow instead of coconut oil. So to make the tallow, you're going to have to render down suet. And to do that, you should probably have it thought out ahead of time. 
cut it into chunks so there's more service area so it renders out a little quicker because I'm a jackass. I left it in the freezer until I needed it and then it took about two or three hours on a low flame to render out enough tallow to fry my chicken in. You don't want to put the flame too high because you don't want to fry the suet. You just want to render it out. Lo and behold, after about three hours and cutting it up into pieces once it got a little warmer, this became this. Holy, oh. this is a lot of talking. All right, so now, uh, don't worry, we're almost there, man. Next is going to be grinding our pork rinds up to make the coating for the chicken. It's real simple. Put them in the blender, pulse the blender, put more in the blender, pulse the blender, blend it. That's it. And then throw it in a bowl and season it. You heard? For this carnivore sauce, we're going to need egg yolks to thicken the sauce with. So I'm going to separate these eggs here, yolks from the whites, and I'm going to keep the whites to use for the egg wash. So I'm just going to use three yolks to thicken the sauce with, and I'm going to add one more egg to the three egg whites to use as my egg wash to coat the chickens with. When I am working with chicken, I like to get everything I need together ahead of time so I don't got to touch nothing with chicken hands and I like to cover every surface that I'm going to be working around that I don't want to risk cross contaminating because you don't want to get gross chicken nasties all over everything. That's also why I like to wear gloves when I do this. Most chicken breast that you buy is already mostly trimmed so just go over it a little bit take off any little pieces of fat or leftover like uh, connective tissue or anything that you find cut it off throw it in your little garbage there and butterfly the piece of chicken. Now, I can never do it 100% half and half. Just do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you get all that cut up and ready to go, have your Ziploc bag ready already, and put your chicken in there and close it up. Now, when you close it up, you don't want to close it up all the way because you don't want it, the air to trap in there because it'll pop when you're smacking on it. In fact, I, it looks like I didn't even close it up at all. So just pound your chicken. When you're pounding your meat, don't pound it too hard because you don't want to hurt yourself. And when you're pounding your chicken, don't pound your chicken too hard because you don't want to pound through it. This just, uh, it makes the chicken cook faster and it makes it a little bit more tender when you go to eat it. It's easier to cut and all that and chew. So... That's the reason for this. And then I like to season it as well uh, ahead of time before I cook it so that mostly because I don't forget because I forget a lot. And then uh, the other reason is it lets the seasonings kind of just soak into it. Finally, it is time to fry this chicken. So get your oil hot. It should start popping immediately if you splash like a little drop of water in there. You don't want to splash more than that because you'll start a fire. Uh, you don't want to do that because you don't want to burn your house down. So, there's that. Go ahead, throw your chicken in the egg wash. Throw it in the coating. Now, what I like to do is I find it's kind of counterintuitive, right? So, you think you put the chicken down in the coating and the entire bottom half is covered in coating. So, you think it would stick better that way. But it actually sticks better on the top half when you're kind of rubbing it in there. I don't know why. doesn't make any sense to me. But uh, so you, you, I just don't skip rubbing in the top part. So then coat it and slowly put it in the oil and then repeat. Once you have all this, both these things frying, I would say let them fry about maybe four minutes on either side. If you're not sure if it's cooked enough, Use a meat thermometer to make sure the internal temperature at the center is at least 165, right? Because less than that, you run the risk of poisoning yourself, and that ain't smart. And now is also probably a good time to start preheating your oven to 350. Now, when this chicken was done, I drained it on a uh, little wire rack here. You can... You can use that if you want, or you can use like paper towels or a paper bag or anything you want. It's just whatever. 
not gonna lie, this sauce is a little bit of a pain in the ass to make. Start by measuring out a quarter of a cup of heavy cream. You can use light cream or half and half, but heavy cream is probably gonna be the best way to go. And get it in a little saucepan over a medium low flame you don't want to heat it too fast you don't want to bring it to like a rolling boil or anything it should be hot but below boiling temperature when that's getting hot measure out a quarter cup of chicken broth i use chicken bone broth because it's got more collagen in it but you don't have to use that uh and i also use the same measuring cup to sort of rinse out the cream that's left in the cup this is also the time to get the egg yolks ready so beat them up in a bowl. I use this bowl with a little bit of a rubber bottom so that when I'm bringing them up to temperature with the cream later, the bowl doesn't start sliding around on the counter. Once the cream's up to temperature, which is very hot but not boiling because you don't want to scald the cream, slowly, very slowly, begin to add it to your egg yolks while you're beating it in there. Now, it's got to be extremely slowly the way these egg yolks come up to temperature because otherwise they're gonna cook and you're gonna end up with like creamy egg drop soup. As you add the cream, the eggs are gonna come up to a higher and higher temperature and they're also gonna become more and more diluted. As the temperature gets higher and the eggs are more diluted, you can begin to add the cream slightly faster. So I'm not even going to fast forward through this part because it's a pain in the ass to get this right. So I'm just going to let it play out at regular speed so you can kind of get a gauge for, you know, how long it, how, how exactly how slow you should go with this. This is like, if you're going to make a custard, you would, you would do the cut, you would do this the same way as th that's how I got this from. So yeah, I know it's a little bit boring to watch, but, uh. This is like one of, the, one of the few things that's kind of important to get it right. Don't worry. This is almost done. You're not going to have to suffer too much longer. All right, that's it for that. Now, here I've added the bone broth to the cream in the pan, and I'm bringing it up to temperature. Normally, I would just add the yolks directly to the cream to make this custard, but... Unfortunately, there wasn't that much cream left in the pan, and I was afraid I was going to ruin the mixture if I did it that way. So I'm doing it like this instead. Now that your mixture is up to temperature, you can begin to add your yolks. Uh, you don't have to worry too much because of how diluted and hot they already got. You don't have to worry about cooking them so much this time around. The reason I used this... 8 inch saute pan instead of a regular saucepan with like a square bottom is because as you're stirring this you want to be able to stir it and stir every part of it so what will happen is you'll get like uh, little lumps in the in the mixture if, if they don't get stirred up properly and this is like you can't do it on too high of a temperature you got to kind of like baby it so I'm going to actually fast forward through this part because as long as you just keep stirring it until it gets hot, it'll get to the thickness you want and it'll be good to go. And all you got to do at that point is just add your seasonings, your salt, pepper, garlic. Or if you don't want to use pepper and garlic because you're carnivore, you just want to use salt, that's fine too. Now the carnivore sauce is ready to go. Look how thick that is, right? The tomato sauce, well, the tomatoes are ready to go. And I didn't forget about you calorie counters out there. I saved a piece of chicken. I didn't fry it. I'm putting it in the air fryer to cook it up nice and low calorie for you. Go ahead and put that bitch in there at 370. Four minutes on either side. Internal temperature 165. You don't want to end up having to go to the hospital. Because who the f wants to do that? Now that this chicken's cooked, we're just about ready. So go ahead and put it on the plate. Grab your little tomato sauce substitute and throw it right on there. Grab a little grated Parmesan and sprinkle it right on there. And now at this point, we have completed the calorie conscious version of this chicken parm meal. Now on to the rest. All right, we're in the home stretch, brother. So we're going to do our Ketovore tomato sauce substitute on one of the chickens. 
and our carnivore cream sauce is going to go on the other piece of chicken. Top it off with your mozzarella and throw it in the oven for 15-20 minutes until it's whatever, however melted that you like it. The chicken's already cooked so you can even put it under the broiler if you want. reason I switched pans is because normally I use whole milk mozzarella and it melts real nice and it runs all over the bottom of the pan. But uh, today I skimped and I didn't do that. So, and if you put it in the broiler, don't put paper with it, okay? After what feels like a lifetime of editing, we have come to the completion of this video. And here is the end result. I really enjoyed this dish. I didn't enjoy making it that much, but I enjoyed eating it a lot. So, uh, I hope you make it, and I hope you enjoy it too. All right? Peace out, brother. Hey, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate you, brothers and sisters. Uh, do me a solid if you could. Uh, comment on the video below. Uh, give a like. Give a subscribe. Ring the Fire bell eating. for the notifications. Uh, check out the other videos, whenever they pop up. And uh, finally, don't be a goddamn communist. Thanks. Peace.